The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, an official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Friends, if you happen to know anyone who is thinking of buying or building a home, or is considering refinancing his present home, please phone him and tell him to listen to this program. For in a few minutes, our sponsor the Equitable Life Assurance Society will give facts and figures about America's finest plan for home ownership. Every family will want to hear about this great Equitable Society plan which saves money and gives special protection to homeowners. Tonight's FBI file, The Slaughterhouse Swindlers. Professional criminals are avowed enemies of society and as such merit the full penalty prescribed by the laws which they violate. But so-called good citizens who conspire with criminals to violate the law for personal gain are the Benedict Arnolds of society. The prayers for profit of the respect and welfare of those whom they would call fellow citizens. And as such, they merit the contemptuous kind of moral condemnation that is reserved for all traitors. On a modest little dairy farm a few miles out of Des Moines, Mrs. Reba Jones, recently widowed, has just completed the morning's chores and is walking up to the house when two men drive up in a truck designed for hauling livestock. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Are you Mrs. Reba Jones? Yes, sir. Well, my name's Latimer, and this is Mr. Randall. Oh. We're inspectors for the Department of Agriculture. Oh, how do you do? Hello. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, I hate to tell you this, Mrs. Jones, but we're here on a kind of unpleasant mission. What's wrong? Well, the dairy company you sell your milk to has just reported to us a very unfavorable bacteria count on some of the milk from here. Oh, but they never said anything to me about it. But their duty to report to us first, Mrs. Jones. And our duty to check on your cow. Oh. You see, a lot of the dairy company's products are sold across the state line. And that makes it Uncle Sam's business to see that the quality meets federal standards of purity. Oh, of course. Mrs. Jones, uh, how many cows in your herd? Well, I... There's only 12 head. Mm-hmm. You going to test them now? That's right. And if you... If you find some of them's deceased... Well, we'll have to condemn them. Oh. Yes, we'll have to take them with us, Mrs. Jones. Uh, but we're authorized to pay you a condemnation fee. But I, I just can't afford to lose any. Even with the whole herd, I just barely make a living from them. Well, you wouldn't want to sell milk that you knew to be diseased, would you? No. Of course not. Uh, well, uh, the herd is down the pasture now. I'll go and get him into the barn for you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Well, she fell for it okay. <laughs> we should clip her for the whole herd. Come on. All right, boys. I'm giving you $200 a head for them cows. I thought you ran a slaughterhouse, Jenkins, not a clip. Now, let me handle this, Al. $200? That's my price. You better take another look at the weight figures, Jenkins. Price stands. Take it or leave it. Oh, look, we take all the risk getting these cows. Adamer, as far as I'm concerned, they're your own cows. I operate a legitimate licensed slaughterhouse. Who's kidding who? You're up to your ears in the black market, same as we are. Now, look here. You said yourself three of the last head we brought you were disease. And they were, too. But you bought them from us, didn't you? Maybe you'd better take your cows to some other slaughterhouse. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, both of you. 
You've got us over a barrel, Mr. Jenkins, and you know it. So, just give us a dough. Hmm. Now you're talking sense. Here's your money. Count it if you like. Oh, I'm sure it's all there. You don't steal your money that way. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you think? Come on now. Right. We'll be seeing you, Mr. Jenkins. Good day. Go ahead. Okay. Ah, what did you settle so easy for? Because we couldn't take the cows anyplace else. They were worth more than he gave us. What he gave us was only a down payment. What do you mean? I think I know a way to tap that old geezer for plenty. It was a little earlier that same day when Special Agent Meade of the Des Moines field office of the FBI entered the office of Agent in Charge Clark. Did you send for me, Mr. Clark? Oh, yes, Meade. Looks like we've got an impersonation swindle case to go to work on. Oh? Uh -huh. A couple of days ago, two men posing as inspectors of the Department of Agriculture condemned some cows on a farm near the city. Yes? They claimed these cows were diseased, so they were authorized to pay $50 a head for them, and did, then loaded the cows into a truck and drove away. The black market, no doubt. More than likely. But the act of impersonating a federal officer is our immediate angle. How'd we hear about it? Well, the widow who owned the cows got suspicious later on, called the public health officer here in Des Moines. He just called me a minute ago. I guess he'd already checked with the Department of Agriculture. Yes, and I double-checked. What's the first move? Well, you better drive out there right away and interview the victim. There may be others by now. That's why we want to work fast. What's her name? Mrs. Ruth Mason. Here. This is the location of her farm. Hmm. Okay. And Meade... Get a good description of the men and any other lead you can and hurry back, right? All right, Al. Pull up in here by the stock pens. Right. There's old Jenkins coming out of the office now. Okay, stop the truck. We better get our dough for these cows before we spring the other deal on them. Shut up, here he comes. Now let me do the talking. Okay. Yeah. You fellas seem to be working pretty fast. Yeah, we don't believe in letting the grass grow under cows, Jenkins. Five dead, huh? Pretty good looking stuff, too. For a change. Where'd you get them? Ain't you forgetting what you said? As far as you're concerned, all the cows we bring belong to us. All right, all right. Can you handle these? I can use all you get like that. That's fine. Al, huh? you run these over to the scales. Mr. Jenkins and I have got business to talk over. Okay. Can we go to your office? Sure. Come ahead. Go ahead in. All right. Well, what's on your mind, Latimer? You said you could handle all the cows we could get as good as those in the truck. That's right. Could you handle, say, say 150 hen? Where are you going to get that many? Could you handle them? Certainly. Well, then I can get them all right. Uh, there's just one hitch. What's that? Money. I don't get you. Now, look, we lay out cash for them animals. We ain't getting no 150 head unless we put the dough on the line. Oh. So, where do we get the cash? How much would they cost? Me or you? Hmm? Well, I'm supposed to make a profit, you know. And how much would they cost you? About a hundred a head. Fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah, that's right. Who are you buying them from? <laughs> now, you ain't trapping me into a giveaway like that. <laughs> Are you interested in putting up the dough? Maybe. Oh, look, don't hedge. Are you or ain't you? How do I know this isn't a swindle? You can come along if you want when I swing the deal. When would that be? Well, right now, if you like. I don't keep that kind of money around the office. Hmm. Uh, when could you get it? Later in the day. Well, then we'll knock them off tonight. How much do you have to charge me for the cows? Usual rate. Two hundred a head. That's letting you fellas operate in my money and make 100% profit. It's too much. Now, look, Mr. Jenkins. 
take it or leave it. I... Here at my office tonight. Can I come in, Mr. Clark? Oh, yes, come ahead, Mead. Did you talk to the woman out at the farm? Yes. Get any good leads? She gave a pretty good description of the two men. Anybody we know? I don't think so. Their names are Latimer and Randall. At least those are the names they used. Yes. But this might give us an even better lead. What's that? The woman was smart enough to make them give her a receipt for her cows. Oh, good for her. Latimer signed it. And no doubt left his fingerprints on it. Right. Well, first thing, we'll alert all local police and licensed slaughterhouses in the city and state. Give them the description of those two men. Yes, sir. And, Mead, while I'm getting that started, will you run that receipt through the lab for fingerprints? Right. I'd like to catch those fellas before they clean up and get out of the state. Now. Okay. Good. There's a light on in Jenkins' office. Guess he's keeping our date all right. But will he have the dough with him? Well, sure. Why not? He didn't guarantee it this afternoon. Yeah, this sounds like too good a touch to him. He'll have it. Now, come on. Now, yeah, wait a minute. What's the matter? Look in and see if anybody's with him. No, he's by himself. Okay. Knock on the door. Come in. Come in. Go ahead, Al. All right. Well, how are you tonight, Mr. Jenkins? Let's get down to business. Yeah, that suits me fine. You, uh, you got the dough ready? I have. Oh. Where is it? In my pocket. The deal starts when it's in my pocket, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, no. I'm not giving up any money until I see those cows. You ain't seeing no cows. What does he mean? Well, we're kind of changing the deal. Hmm? Well, that 15000 goes to us direct. What for? Well, sort of like a bonus. What are you talking about? Ah, quit wasting time with them, Chuck. Now, see here. What's this all about? You're paying us that 15 G's to keep quiet, Jenkins. What? You wouldn't like us to expose your operation here, would you? This is a licensed slaughterhouse, Latimer, and my books are clean. To a stranger, maybe, but not to the law. Look here. I've had enough of this. Oh, yeah? You're just trying to blackmail me. And what if we are? It won't work. No? No. Because I'm clean. You two are not. You couldn't report me to the law without getting slapped in jail yourselves, and you know it. Chuck, that angle ain't gonna work. It certainly isn't. Well, then I guess we'd better try another. The only thing that you can do is to get out of here and get out of here right now. Oh, that ain't the only thing. Get out, I say. Now, look, we came here for that 15 grand. We're going to get it. Go to work, Al. With pleasure. Now, wait a minute. You can't. (laughs) Now, if you'll grab his wallet, Al, we'll turn out the lights and close up office for the night. Now, before the FBI file on the slaughterhouse swindlers resumes, as it will in just a moment, here's that important message for homeowners and home buyers. This week at the Equitable Life Assurance Society, we were talking about how a man feels when he lives in a home of his own. And someone said there's nothing like it. When you light that first fire in your fireplace, it's not like any fire that ever warmed you before. And the first flower you grow yourself in your own garden has a sweeter scent than any flower you ever smell before. Yes, a man who lives in a home of his own has satisfactions that the rent payer never knows. And that's why we of the Equitable Society take such pride in our assured home ownership plan, which offers home buyers security along with these five important advantages. One, the mortgage is canceled, paid off in full if owner dies. Besides, every dollar previously paid on principal is returned in full to the widow along with a canceled mortgage. Two, 
a special cash fund is built up, ready to be used if financial emergencies threaten the home. Three, this cash fund increases as the mortgage shrinks. It can be used to shorten the term of the mortgage, pay off a 20-year mortgage, for example, in as little as 14 years, saving six years' interest. Four, mortgage interest not at 6%, not at 5%, but at only 4%. Five, liberal allowance to cover title search, lawyer's fees, and other closing costs. No broker's commission, no bonus charges. Well, frankly, there is no other plan like this anywhere. The Equitable Society calls it America's finest plan for home ownership. It protects you against the two major hazards of home mortgages, death and hard times. So if you're planning to buy or build a house, or if you now own a home, Get complete information on the Assured Home Ownership Plan from your Equitable Society representative. That's the Equitable Society, E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E, the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file, The Slaughterhouse Swindler. The professing good citizen who consorts or conspires with professional criminals to violate the law for personal gain is not only flirting with justice at the hands of the law, he is also courting personal disaster at the hands of those with whom he conspires. Because to criminals, the renegade citizen is not one of them. Rather, he is a pawn to be played by them when the time comes. And always, he is played for a sucker. It is nearly two hours now after the slaughterhouse operator, Jenkins, was beaten into unconsciousness by the cattle swindlers and robbed of $15,000. Agent in charge Clark of the Des Moines office of the FBI is at his desk talking with Special Agent Meade when... Clark speaking. Police headquarters, Mr. Clark. This is Sergeant Eaton. Oh, hello, Sergeant. We've got something that may tie in with those two men you're looking for. Oh? Well, just a minute. Mead. Yeah? Get on the other phone and catch us, too, will you? Right. All right, Sergeant. Go ahead. It's about a man named Jenkins who operates a slaughterhouse at the edge of town. Yes? The night watchman making his rounds found him beaten unconscious on the floor of his office a little over an hour ago. Mm -hmm. The watchman remembered hearing a truck drive into the yard earlier. I see. Just before he discovered Jenkins on the floor, he had heard the truck drive away. But he hadn't seen who was in it. No, with Jenkins on duty himself, he hadn't paid much attention. Well, where's the victim now, Sergeant? We got him to the city hospital. He just came to a little while ago. Oh. What did he have to say? Well, that's just it. He wouldn't talk. Well, we'll get on it right away and check with you later, Sergeant. Goodbye. Thanks a lot. Bye. I guess we better get over to the hospital right away. No, later. What? First, we're going to have a look around out at the slaughterhouse. Why? We just might find some evidence with which we can encourage Mr. Jenkins to talk. Come on. I told the nurse not to let anybody else in my room. We're special agents of the FBI, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, that's all. And I have nothing to say to you either. This is my affair. Now, we have reason to believe it's our affair, too. What do you mean? We've just come from your slaughterhouse. What are we doing there? Investigating the crime. Crime? What crime? Crime that's put you in this hospital. Now, look here. Well? I have nothing to say. All right, then, we have. We happened to run across a special memo of some cattle transactions which were not entered in your regular ledger, Mr. Jenkins. Where are we? You're trying to tell me how to keep my books? Maybe the government will get around to that later. What do you mean? Right now, we're interested in finding two men named Latimer and Randall. Well? Some of those special cattle deals, according to the memo, were made with them. 
What of it? Latimer and Randall are wanted for cattle swindling by posing as agents of the Department of Agriculture. They were just cattle dealers to me. And you bought the cattle they obtained by criminal methods. As far as I was concerned, the cattle were their own. Mr. Jenkins, I'd like to point out that we're in a position to justifiably charge you with conspiracy for receiving and selling property obtained by criminal methods. But how can if you... If you're brought to court, you'd have to explain your books and special memos and all your slaughterhouse operations to some experts who might find something wrong with them. Well? What do you wish to know? Where are Latimer and Randall? I don't know. Who beat you up tonight? They did. Why? All I'm saying is they beat me up, stole $15,000 for me, and escaped in their truck. Can you describe their truck? It's a cattle truck, and the license number is written down in a notebook in my coat pocket. Made? Yes. Get the notebook for you, please. Right. Mr. Jenkins, the beating you've got tonight is what you might expect and deserve for playing ball with criminals. Please. When we catch Latimer and Randall, we'll get the whole story behind your dealings with them. And if it's what I think it is, you'll have quite a bit of explaining to do. Hey, wait, slow up, Al. Huh? Coming to a fork in the highway. It's okay, we take the left turn to Kansas City. How do you know? I marked out the whole route on that map there. Okay, then keep going. Hey, Chuck. Yeah? Maybe we ought to get rid of this truck. Maybe it's getting hot by now. Yeah, I've been thinking of that already. So what do we do? The next town we hit, we kiss it goodbye and borrow somebody else's car. Here's the truck, Mr. Clark. We found it abandoned on a side street here earlier this morning. I see. And just a while ago, a man reported his car stolen during the night. Well, that sounds like two and two to me, officer. Well, that's what we figured. Maid. Yes? Well, I'm taking down the information on the stolen car. Will you have a look in the truck? Right. What's the description of the stolen car, officer? Black Chevrolet sedan, 41 model. Sedan, 41 model. Iowa license, 426. 426. 73. Mr. Clark. 73. Yes? Look at this map I found on the seat. What about it? Pencil mark, tracing the whole route from Des Moines to Kansas City. Oh? Huh? You think maybe they might be I headed? think we're going to get out an alarm on this stolen car right away and then head for Kansas City. Okay, Al, we didn't come to Kansas City for a rest. Now let's get busy. On what? I got a slaughterhouse all lined up to do business with us. But we ain't got a truck. Oh, we're going to use one of theirs. Okay, where do we go first? Well, we're following our same plan. I got number one spotted. Come on, let's ride. Oh, yes, mate. Latimer and Randall are in Kansas City. They're not in a hotel. No? I spent all morning with our agents and the police here checking. No trace of them. No sign of the stolen car either? Not yet. Maybe this other thing will turn them up. What's that? Well, the county farm agent here in Kansas City has been helping me all morning make a lot of telephone calls. I don't get it. Well, Meade, I studied all those jobs that Latimer and Randall pulled around Des Moines. Yeah? And I think I've hit on the pattern of their operation. Really? And if I'm right... Well, if I'm right, maybe the phone is ringing right now with a proof. Mrs. Gilmer, we're sorry to have to report that we find five of your cows diseased. Good heavens, Mr. Latimer. That, that's going to be quite a blow to me. Well, the five head won't be a total loss to you, however. What do you mean? Well, as I told you when I made the appointment for this test, we're authorized to pay you a condemnation fee. Well, at least that's something. Come on, Randall. We'll start loading the cows in the truck. Okay. Those cows are staying right here, Latimer. Hey, what, who said? What's the idea and who are you? We're special agents of the FBI. You want to hear any more? Put up your hands, G-men. Sure, Randall. Sure, we'll put up our hands. Maybe you won't object if I use mine like this. Here, Mead. 
Take his gun. Right. Thanks for cooperating with us, Mrs. Gilmer. And thanks to you, Latimer, for your policy of cheating widows only. It made it a lot easier for us to catch you. Come on. Arranged in a federal court on the charge of impersonating agents of the U.S. government. Latimer and Randall were found guilty and sentenced to the penitentiary. The findings at their trial also enabled FBI agents later to bring the slaughterhouse operator Jenkins to justice and bring about his conviction on a charge of conspiracy. Latimer and Randall, as professional criminals, were enemies of society but Jenkins a professing good citizen. Because he conspired with criminals and betrayed the welfare of those whom he would call fellow citizens, Jenkins was that something far morally worse than an enemy of society. He was a Benedict Arnold of society. And it is his kind which does more damage to the moral structure of society than all of its openly avowed enemies combined. Now, before we tell you about next week's story from the files of your FBI, may I remind you that the Equitable Society's Assured Home Ownership Plan is a money-saving plan every step of the way. Naturally, we can't give you every detail here, but your Equitable Life Assurance Society representative can. He has literature that you can study, and once you get the facts, you'll be quick to agree that here's America's finest home ownership plan. Phone him tomorrow. Call the number of the Equitable Life Assurance Society. E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Sinister Lighthouse. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Frank Ferries, and your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. And now this is Carl Frank, speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Sinister Lighthouse. On this is your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>